Olympiakos are back, that's been the talk of the street after the first four Euroleague games. Greeks have started the season winning 3 out of 4, with the only loss coming against the mighty Barcelona in Spain. So what's the secret? Are Olympiakos for real? Are they finally a legit contender for a playoff and maybe even a final 4 spot? Let's dig deep into their game clips and see what's really going on with Giorgio's Barzokas team. First of all, it's easy to underline their main strength. They kept all of the opponents under 80 points and their defense has been the main reason for their strong start as they rank number 3 on that side of the court. It's been a merit of players' energy and physicality as well as the choices made by the coaching staff. Against Real, a team which uses a lot of off-ball screens for their shooters, they didn't allow any easy baskets on the catch. Thomas Walkup and others let their presence be felt by putting a lot of contact before the screen happened. They followed aggressively and it resulted in some offensive fouls. Another thing to have if you want a good defense are active hands. A great example. When pick and roll happens, look how much of the court Printezis covers with his hands. It might have stopped Yui from passing to Tavares here. Hassan Martin tries to steal the ball before running back with the hands held high and McKissick gets the job done by deflecting the ball out of bounds. This kind of intensity and little details on the defensive end come before any tactics. If you don't have these basic principles installed, your defense can be elite. So Oli fans should be excited to see this kind of energy and involvement. Now talking about pick and roll defense, we saw coach Bartzokas and his team adjusting to the opponents and the flow of the game. Against Real, the most used tactic was forcing players to their weak hands. I think it worked even better than the Oli coaching staff might have expected, as we can see Kosur and Sergio Yui losing balls just dribbling to their weaker sides. In the next clip, Walkup is inviting Wertel to drive left, where three other Olympiakos players are waiting. It would take something extraordinary here from Thomas to beat basically four players while using his weaker hand, so he just passes out the ball to the corner with five seconds left and Yabuzele tries to invent something. When there was more space to attack left and Wertel managed to get inside, Oli simply executed a switch inside. It's another important pick and roll defensive tactic that Bartzokas uses. It works well due to Olympiakos' guard size and their excellent teamwork and rotations. Jalgiris didn't have much of an interior presence with Joffrey Laverne sidelined, but concentrate on the Greek team players here. Darcy fronts Nebo, Papo Nicolaou is ready to help in case there is a lob pass, Vezenkov uses his hands to make the pass difficult, and Walkup shadows the flash cut used for a high-low pass. The possession stops and it leaves Jalgiris with Lekavicius one-on-one with Walkup. These two know each other pretty well and Walkup immediately influences Lucas Wright and wins the battle inside. Probably the worst 10 minutes Olympiakos played was their slow start against Stralgiris. They were getting punished for lazy defense on Spain pick and rolls, so Bartzokas decided it's time to switch the first pick. And Oli has the resources to do that. Their big men have enough lateral quickness to not get beaten by perimeter players, and it's an important ingredient to having successful switch all defense. Against the Red Whites, teams are shooting a league low only 20% from the three point line. This is a merit of all what we have seen before, aggressive following on off-ball screens and switching if necessary. Then fronting the post thus not allowing advantages to be used and closing the most common concept against switch all defense, flashing for a high-low pass. On pick and roll, they try to force you to your weak hand, if not, the big man stays low, inviting you to shoot over him. Bartzokas leaves the pick and roll defense a two-man job, with other players not helping much, only stunting when they have a chance. This philosophy allows the player with the ball to attack the basket, but it doesn't create situations for the ball to move around the court. Instead of ball movement, which creates open spot of freeze, Against Olympiakos you will have to find a way to score against Mustafa Fall and aggressively following guards. Expect Oli to have a top 5 defense all season long. Now let's transfer our attention to the offensive side of the court and analyze three of their most used set plays. Their actions tend to be longer than the average Euroleague set, with lots of movement happening before the real action. Number 1 used set starts with a flex action on the weak side with Sasha Vezenkov setting the screen and immediately receiving one. He runs to get the ball only to hand it off on the run for a sprinting guard who attacks the pick and roll. Jalgiris players miscommunicate here on the pick and Tyler Dorsey calmly knocks down a free. The objective of this scheme is to get the guard attacking downhill with speed. Teams have to decide how they want to handle handoff into pick and roll action. 
Passing in the middle during handoff makes it hard to go around the screen, but following on both gives the guard too much advantage. It is designed mainly for Slukas and Dorsey, who are extremely dangerous at both finishing off the dribble and creating for the teammates. If opponents go under during the screen, Oli just uses a rescreen and see what happens. Miami or a handoff into pick and roll concept is something that Bartokas really likes, because Oli has another similar and quicker option. Point guard passes to 4, who then hands it off to another guard, who plays a Spain pick and roll with the back screen often just clearing space instead of setting a real pick. This set allows Oli guards to get inside and then scan the court for potential opening in the corners as the help side rotations happen. It might seem like one big mess as all of the players on the court are moving, but while opponents are not used to it and have a hard time understanding, this mini chaos creates a lot of different ways to gain an advantage. Another set play I enjoyed watching was their fist side option, stagger, hand back to playmaker, wear screen where the screen up top is fake but instead the big goes to set a pin down, the guard curls around only to make the big guy receive the ball, playmaker comes to receive it back with speed and only then the real action happens, Oli wants either attack immediately or play an empty corner pick and roll, a super long entry to an action on a side where 4 players touch the ball before you even begin to attack. Bartsokas utilizes it to give a grip of the game for everyone and tries to see if the opponents can stay concentrated for a longer period of time. In these clips, we can see that this scheme doesn't create a direct shot on an empty corner pick and roll, but rather an advantage which Oli later transfers into a high percentage shot at the end of the shot clock. And now a rear set for Mustafa Fall to post up. After the pass, the playmaker cuts through to the other side only to receive the ball back. Other guard then sets a brush or a bumper screen for the center, who just passed the ball as if Oli would be trying to catch his defender off guard and steal two points. If that doesn't happen, it's a simple post up. Again, an action where four players are involved, while three players touch the ball before the real objective of this play. This is what Bartzaka's style is all about. A nice wrinkle of this play came in the game against Real Madrid. The grenade option which is a recent trend in the Euroleague and gets more popular with every passing week. After the post-up catch, Lucas cuts and Dorsey sprints to take a handoff from the center, in other words the grenade. It works often because the guard is trailing his man and the center naturally helps, leaving the big guy rolling to the rim freely. The weak side help on the grenade play is also very far away, making it a very difficult action to stop. Olympiacos can be the real difference maker this year because they have a deep rotation and players that can stand out. Their guards complement each other perfectly. Walkup gives fear for the opponents on defense and is a real point guard. Dorsey is capable of creating his own shot at any given time and scoring off the dribble and Slukas is still one of the best playmakers in Europe, capable of all three things at a high level, driving and kicking, finishing in the paint and knocking down threes and long twos at a high percentage. Let's not forget Makisic's ability to drive and his strength and also Larenzakis, who so far has been a real spark and surprise from the bench, shooting better than 40% from free. However, the biggest figure on the team so far has been Sasha Vezenkov. Bulgarian may not be the flashiest player on the court, but is capable of offering many things to Georgios Bartsokas. Although his 3 point percentage is low, due to a bad shooting night against Real Madrid, he is a threat on the perimeter. Despite 31% from free, people bite on his shot fakes which allow him to go inside and finish the play with these little floater push shots that he likes. He is also a very smart player moving a lot on the court, giving teammates different passing angles and cutting to make himself open. He is also super active going for offensive rebounds and that's the last thing I wanted to highlight about Olympiakos. When the shot goes up, there is always someone crashing the board, especially Vezenkov, who goes inside even a moment before that. He pushes his defender under the basket, eliminating him from the play and allowing Vezenkov to get a touch on a couple of offensive rebounds in every game. Olympiakos ranks third in offensive rebounds and Sasha is a big reason for that, averaging 2.5 per game. To summarize everything that has been said in this video, Olympiakos start looks very promising and I can see them finishing as high as 6th in the regular season. What do you think about their roster changes this summer and their performance in the first 4 games? Do you see the Red Whites coming back to Euroleague playoffs? 
leave a comment down below and push that like button if you enjoyed this breakdown. Until next time.